What's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video, or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Um, my last video, we talked a little bit about the Blackstone Labs results that I had uh, got ran for the cars the second time I had it ran. Uh, basically just trying to just kind of see what the oil life is looking like, seeing what's going on internally, because we have two major concerns. Uh, major concern number one is a weaning oil pressure out on track or when the oil gets the temp. We've mitigated that a little bit with the higher viscosity oil, um, but the bigger concern that's kind of creeping up now is during my interval changes of oil, which are typically really short, anywhere between 250 to 500 miles, I am pulling less and less oil out of the motor on those changes. The last oil change I did, I was three quarts down, which is definitely quite a bit of oil to be missing out of the motor. So I had my buddy Craig come over yesterday. I didn't shoot an intro. I kind of just placed the camera in an angle there. I might have grabbed a couple snips that I'll put up here in a few, in a few minutes, but we did a compression test. Now the compression test is not going to necessarily isolate or point a finger at saying, okay, for sure your piston rings are failed. Now, obviously if there's one really low on compression, there's a good chance that that is where that is failing. But at the same time, just because you have a good compression test result doesn't necessarily say, okay, my piston rings are fine. So we jumped into it. We did the compression test on the motor. Let's jump into the video, see the kind of the results that we pulled out of it, and I'll walk through kind of our findings. So we're doing the compression test, but to do it, we need to keep it on a tender because we're going to be cranking it uh, for a period of time, which will eat up the battery. Typically, to charge a car over the weeks that the car is just kind of sitting, I have a small battery tender, 3 amp, but I also have a 10 amp, and that's what we're going to use now. That's why I'm popping my trunk. That way it's a little bit more voltage kind of going through it. All right, so we pulled all the plugs out to do the compression test and see these are what my normal plugs look like. There you go. Now check this one out. Looks absolutely brand new. So we might have a dead cylinder, might not. We're gonna go ahead and start the compression test and kind of see what we get. When we started the compression test, basically we pulled all eight plugs out and you'll see here in kind of a snippet where I find one of my plugs was clean. I mean, you can eat from it. It was so clean. So initially I was like, well, crap, this car's got a dead cylinder, but I drove it recently. I did a pretty fun pull recently. And I think even though this is a full seven liters of freedom, I think I would feel if I was running on seven cylinders versus eight. And I also thought to myself, well, damn, if I'm running on seven, y'all boys in trouble when I'm running on eight. But the reality was that that wasn't the case. Um, I remembered kind of like in and out through the process that we were pulling them that I had replaced a couple of plugs um, a couple weeks back. Another theory we thought was that I might have coolant washing the plugs out, but the actual plug tip was fine. It was just the rest was really just the threads of the plug was like, brand new. And I had replaced a couple plugs a couple weeks before that. And I forgot that, that I had replaced a couple that I actually had found cracked because I believe I probably torqued them a little bit too much. Um, and you know, the car's been running fine. And, but since the car doesn't move a lot, the threads really didn't get, you know, broken in or worn in because the car really doesn't get used very often. We pulled all the plugs out, like I said. Um, and then we went with the starting it through uh, the flood method, which is Foot to the floor on the gas pedal, obviously clutch in and crank the motor there and obviously kill the motor through the thing. If you're doing it by yourself, you can buy a, a starter jump relay, basically a relay which just has a little switch on it. You replace that with your starter one and then you can just crank the starter from the from basically the engine bay and not power on anything else. But it will get the starter hot, but technically the way we did it too as well, we'll get the starter hot as well. Also, give yourself some time in between the cylinder checking. We probably went through it a bit quicker, but we were cranking it pretty quickly and kind of giving it a break and moving on. But um, no dead cylinder, as you'll kind of see through the video. Pedals until the memory kicks in. Oh, foot to the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to cut. It's not cutting. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it wasn't was responding. On? Huh? You were pressing it. Yeah, and it wasn't like responding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So far, so good. 
But this wouldn't, this wouldn't necessarily, even if they all came clean, it doesn't mean my piston rings are perfect. No, but it means your piston skirts aren't chipped. It means like you're not getting blown by. Right. It means your valves aren't fucked. Like your, your valves aren't hanging, they're not bent. Like the, yeah. This is not the best test, but it's a good test. And then if you find one low and put some oil, ah, fuck, that's what I forgot. I have these big syringes of them, you just shot oil. Like if you know the leaders mm -hmm. oil in it, and if the depression breaks normal, then you know it's raining and stuff. Oh crap! Okay. I mean, I don't know. Do you have like your kids ever get sick? We have baby sy syringes. Yeah, yeah I can yeah. see. Uh, I mean, we got. Uh, one uh, one eight five. So that whole side is a little lower, <laughs> but one eighty five is definitely lower than the rest. Yeah. But then again, that's a different. We're using. A different yeah. Different, so I'd say 190. I, I would say that's about 190. 185 or 190. So nothing like. Yeah, so there's none that's got a plummet. Yeah. I think it was uh, either two or three, but I can't see it because the piston's all the way up. Oh, okay. So you're going to have to bump it over. Okay. Uh, dent in it? The first one had a dent in it. I don't see a dent in any of the other. A dent on the piston? Yeah. Which one did you see a dent on the piston? The first one. Really? Yeah. Well, that's not good. Which might be a couple of my money shifts. Oh, it's going to honk. Huh? So you think I'm running different pistons on this side versus the other side? I don't know, man. Maybe. Which would explain why you have different pressure on this side. Right? It's just weird. All right. So you're going to kind of see us here. We after we did the compression test, and actually in between the compression test, uh, Craig brought his camera, borescope. We dropped it into the cylinders. Kind of looked at all the different cylinders, kind of see if we saw anything on cylinder walls and stuff like that. You're going to see us kind of, what you're seeing on the rest of the stuff is raw us just kind of looking at the car. And we assume that, you know, we potentially found the dent. We ended up realizing as we looked through it that it was just a machine dot that's on all of the cylinders, uh, which is just for, for placement. It kind of indicates, okay, you know, if you have one in the wrong position, you're gonna have some trouble, but they're just there to help you, the engine builders, place the pistons in the right orientation. So that's what they're there for. But initially when we looked, we only had dropped in one cylinder and then looked at others. And we're just kind of moving it around as we go. We're not engine builders by any scenes. We just wanna see if we can visibly see anything that someone who had no clue what they're doing would be able to identify as a problem. So that was our goal. Um, all of the pistons looked absolutely fine. Um, like we did find that two on the passenger side here may have looked a little wet. And again, that's from our experience and that quick drop in with our cameras and those are not perfect. And if you haven't seen my videos earlier on last year, this side of the car did have a head gasket issue. Um, long story short, the previous shop um, that worked on my car for valve seals, um, they took my heads off and they put them back on. They didn't follow the right torque spec settings for it. They did not torque down my heads. I actually had to torque down my heads about a couple weeks after finding that I was getting coolant seeping into my motor. And that's a whole other story for another day. We've had it corrected since then, but I understood that there would be a potential that maybe that, that head gasket could have been compromised from the time that it did run with the head not properly torqued. And the fact that we're seeing the pistons a little bit um, on the wet side and when we reviewed the coolant here this day or water that I'm running, I, I'm a little low on it. So I'm assuming that I am getting some seeping happening still, but we'll address that when we pull the motor. So um, we looked through all that. We obviously have our final compression numbers here, which is probably why I even clicked on this video in the first place. And you can kind of see them here. Everyone on the driver's side is in the 200 level, right? 210, 215, 205. The passenger side, is all in the 195s to 190 range. This is not a gain. This is not a uh, a goal for reaching for the highest compression number. It's for consistency, and these numbers are all pretty consistent across the board. What we're looking for is any major drop offs for any specific cylinder. Now, this is a theory from a non-mechanic, non-engine builder is 
my passenger side is all in the 190 range, right? My driver side is all in the twos. Passenger side is also the same side that had the head gasket issue with the non-properly torqued heads. This is where I found the initial water seeping in. My assumption is this head gasket is still a little compromised and that's why my numbers are slightly lower, but they're still not bad. Um, obviously, I don't want water seeping into my cylinders. I don't want that situation. This car is not really moving much until I take the motor out. But regardless, these numbers, even if it didn't have a head gasket issue, these numbers would put anyone at ease saying, okay, we don't have a major issue in any cylinder. We obviously know that the piston rings are wearing out. We know that the bearings are wearing out, but we wanted to do a compression test anyways. We wanted to do it um, and just kind of spend some time looking around the car. But uh, we did that. Everything looks good so far. That still doesn't mean I'm not taking this motor out. It still doesn't mean it doesn't need attention. It definitely does. But it just gives peace of mind that, okay, everything looks okay. If I want to do one more crazy pull and pray that it doesn't blow, I'll probably will. Slap a couple bearings in this thing and call it a day. We'll be out on the track by next weekend. All right, so there you have it. Like I said, this video is going to be a little bit all over the place because I was just kind of grabbing, you know, content as I went. There's a lot of like just stuff we were talking about in between that I'm not going to post or anything like that. But I'm not going to track it next weekend, like I said, because the motor's still in the car. But I will plan to pull it. It's, my, my goal is September, late September get the motor out, drop it off at the machine shop. I'm going to start ordering parts over the next coming weeks. A uh, new cam coming in, new oil pump. Uh, going to upgrade the timing chain while I'm there. The Going to change a couple of the head components, mainly just like the rocker arms and potentially, you know, if I have to change the dimension on my push rods. But the rocker arms on my car right now are running a hybrid of the factory ones with the... Uh, CHE bushings in it, and then it's also running an, a, a, a mix of other ones and stuff like that. Those little, little things that we that I don't like about the way the car is set up currently is going to kind of get cleaned up, but I'm going to start ordering some of the components so they can start arriving um, and then pull it out with a couple of the buddies. Like I said, I'll capture all that content as well. I think it'll be cool. Um, a couple group of us guys that all have Corvettes um, have all kind of opted in to come hang out. Either I'll have them come for the removal or probably the put back in, I think which should be the most exciting part to get, get back together and get it started with all the guys together. So um, a lot of cool stuff coming if you like engine building and all that. Um, if you've made it this far in this back and forth video that I created, please drop a like, share the video, warn people of how back and forth this video is, but you know, like, subscribe, comment, share. Um, help this channel uh, keep growing and keep putting out content. I love doing this, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.